Hello and welcome to the first episode of Full Court Finance of the new year, 2021. And today we're taking a look at three highly ranked retail stocks to consider buying for this year that don't need any vaccine help. But before we get into everything, I want to say remember to subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. And make sure to check out our new zax.com slash promo page for a look into some of our services, portfolios, and more. So on Tuesday, uh, we saw some some stocks climb back after the all three major uh, U.S. indexes took a dive on Monday, which made some sense as Wall Street took home profits and took a breather after the market surged to new highs to end 2020. Then on Tuesday, we should also note that all eyes are fixed on the Georgia Senate races as investors wait to see which party will have control of the Senate. Wall Street has seemingly been pricing in a gridlock, and that's really at this point what they're hoping for uh, since the early November election. Meanwhile, the new U.S. stimulus bill was passed last month, and the global markets are happy that the Brexit deal was struck on Christmas Eve. Let's also remember that U.S. officials are projecting that roughly 100 million Americans will be vaccinated by February or March and that the vaccine continues to be rolled out and administered in the U.S. and around the world. We should also note that the S&P 500 earnings outlook for this year is strong and that low interest rate environment is continuing to or should at least continue to help bolster stocks and help cover up concerns especially in the near term, about rising coronavirus cases. And then all of this, as most of you would assume, sets up a pretty bullish outlook for 2021. That said, it might not be best to bank on things returning to normal right away or any time in the somewhat near future, even if the vaccine is rolled out successfully. It's really hard to project what the economy will look like by the summer. Therefore, it might be best to focus on stocks that aren't uh, banking on the fact that people are going to be starting to congregate in concert halls or be shoved back on commute uh, commuter trains or anything like that. So we're going to take a look at three stocks that certainly don't need any vaccine help from that broader retail industry. And all of them also happen to be highly ranked Zach's stocks as well. So the first stock we're going to dive into is Winnebago Industries, which trades under the ticker WGO. Winnebago is that iconic American company that builds RVs. So they technically build motorhomes, travel trailers, fifth wheel products, and they also have boats under multiple brands, which includes its namesake, as well as Chris Craft and others. The company is coming off a pretty impressive year, and it might continue to benefit from people looking to travel in different ways during the coronavirus, and they have... A lot of people who are, if you're considering buying an RV or a boat, you obviously have disposable income that's above most Americans. And without travel and other expenses, they're they're deciding to spend their monies, their money in other way. Uh, so we should note that uh, Winnebago was also doing really well before the pandemic, posting 60% revenue growth in uh, FY17, and then 30% sales expansion in fiscal 2018. The company did see its sales dip about 1% in FY19, but it then bounced back in a big way in fiscal 2020 with its sales up about 19% to about $2.4 billion. So the company topped our Q4 estimates in October, ending the year on a high note. And then it topped our first quarter 2021 estimates uh, on December 18th. So at the close of this past year, the company's revenue surged 35% in the first quarter of 2021 uh, as consumers, as we sort of mentioned already, continue to spend on outdoor activities and they're focusing on ways to get outside and travel that don't feature crowded spaces and airplanes and all of those all of those things. Uh, WGO also recorded a record backlog and it noted that it continues to see retail sales momentum uh, that was quote validating continued interest in the outdoors so that broader outdoor space looks poised to do well meanwhile the company has now topped our adjusted quarterly earnings by over 60 percent in the last two quarters and it beat our bottom line estimate by 35 percent in the quarter before that so with that in mind looking ahead we're calling for the company's second quarter revenue to jump over 27 percent with its adjusted earnings to climb 105% all the way up to $1.37 per share. And then in Q3, which would go against uh, 
the year ago period where it had the the coronavirus downturn, we're expecting its sales to jump over 94% and its adjusted earnings to climb from a, a loss of 26 cents per share all the way up to positive $1.27. So a big jump in Q3. Overall, we're expecting the company to post another 36% revenue growth in fiscal 2021 and adjusted earnings growth of 130%. So a big year they had in 2020 is going to be expected to be followed up by another impressive year in fiscal 2021. And then if we look ahead all the way to 2022, they're expecting uh, a big slowdown in terms of top and bottom line growth, but they're expected to even continue to grow on both the top and bottom line next year after back-to-back impressive years of growth. Since it reported on December 18th, the company has seen its adjusted earnings picture turn far more impressive. So it's Q2 uh, earnings estimate, consensus earning estimates up over 29% with its uh, FY 2021. So it's current year consensus estimate up 30% as well. So analysts have raced to up their outlooks as the company looks pretty strong. Overall, though, that positive bottom line revisions helps the company earn a Zach's rank number one strong buy at the moment. Winnebago also has a B grade for value as well as an A grade for growth and momentum in our style score system. We should also note that it's industry, which is the building products mobile home and RV builders space sits in the top 6%. So it comes in at number 15 out of 254 Zach's industry. So it's a really strong industry at the moment. Uh, Winnebago also has a 0.76% dividend, which roughly matches its industry's average at the moment. It is not too far below the 10-year U.S. Treasury. Uh, Winnebago stock is up about 8% in the last month and 22% in the past year which is part of a really impressive 235% climb in the last five years that's seen it crush its industry's 75% average. Uh, So despite this impressive performance, uh, impressive top line, bottom line growth, and being up about 22% last year, WGO sits about 12% off its June 2020 highs at the moment. And the stock popped about 2% Tuesday to reach around uh, to reach over $62 per share, yet it still sits 12% off those June highs. So that could be a better buying opportunity for those high in Winnebago as its outlook looks continuing uh, to improve as people are, despite this vaccine positivity, look poised to continue to spend on RVs and boats and anything that gets them outside and maybe away from their normal travel plans. And now we're gonna move on to another retail stock that doesn't need any help from a vaccine, and that is Yeti. It trades under the ticker Y-E-T-I, which is the same as its company's name. Yeti has come a long way from its 2006 founding as a niche high-end cooler company. Today, the Austin, Texas-based firm still sells those heavy-duty coolers that can cost up to $1,300, but it's also expanded its offerings to... uh, feature multiple coolers in more colors, as well as tumblers, mugs, dog bowls, much more much more uh, consumer products. So its Q3 sales jumped about 30%, which represented its best top line growth as a public firm. And Wall Street was once again pleased to see that its drinkware space accounted for about 60% of total sales. So it's getting beyond that more niche cooler space. But coolers are also doing well, along with Winnebago as People look to spend money on things maybe they wouldn't normally as they have uh, more disposable income. Obviously, that's not all people in America, but people who have that disposable income that are willing to spend $1,000 in a cooler are clearly still in a, a decent financial situation. And it, it, it goes along with that, that broader outdoor camping space uh, idea as well. And it was, a, it was lots of people probably got Yetis as Christmas gifts this year as well. Uh, Yeti is also part of a group of higher-end retail brands that have certainly succeeded in crowded markets, uh, inspired knockoffs, and their branding and loyal uh, customer base continue to grow. You can think of Yeti sort of along the lines of or in the broader space of the likes of Lululemon and Peloton and Canada Goose. Uh, Yeti has also grown its e-commerce business and slowly expanded its brick-and-mortar footprint. Wall Street has rewarded the stock by helping it climb about 320% in the past two years. This includes a 40% jump in the past three months. 
in the stock as of Tuesday was sitting about 5% off its December highs at around $70 per share. <clears throat> we should also note that it trades at a pretty significant discount to Lululemon in terms of forward sales and earnings. Plus, we should also note that the stock has an A grade for growth and the leisure recreation product space that it is a part of sits in the top 5% of our over 250 Zacks Industries. We should also note that looking ahead, Zacks estimates call for Yeti's Q4 sales to jump over 16% to help lift its adjusted earnings by 27%. Meanwhile, its total fiscal 2020 sales are expected to surge about 16% to climb over $1 billion. So they're expected to reach about $1.1 billion this year with FY 2021 set to climb another 13% higher. So some continued top line growth. Meanwhile, its adjusted earnings are projected to climb 45% this year to $1.74 per share with FY 2021 expected to come in another 18% higher. We should also note that like all the stocks on the list today, its earnings revisions help it grab a Zach's rank number one strong buy right now. And now we're going to close out with what is by far the largest of these three retail stocks that we're going to touch on today, and that is Target, which trades in the ticker TGT. Target wowed Wall Street once again. This is back in mid-November, which seems like a million years ago at this point. As it continues to shine bright during the Amazon era, the retailer's Q3 sales were up a whopping 21%, and this is for the second straight quarter, over 20% revenue growth with in-store comps up 10% and digital comps up a whopping 155%, which is really impressive for a company of target size and age and really went to show how these big retailers have really benefited during this coronavirus times as people are shopping far differently than they ever have. And it's, it's part of a a broader trend that's, that's going to benefit the likes of target and Walmart and Amazon for years, if not decades to come. Uh, With that in mind, it's, seen consumers really take to its same-day offerings. Uh, This helped Target crush its bottom line estimates, expand its margin, and Target continues to outshine Walmart and Amazon in terms of that margin, which is really important going forward as well. The Minneapolis-based retailer has also attracted customers through what most would argue are pretty trendy and affordable offerings, all the way from furniture and home decor to fashion, food, and more. So it's really a one-stop shop for many, many people. Target has also grabbed partnerships with brands that were once major staples at department stores. Uh, This includes Levi's and others, and they could continue to see those partnerships grow as department stores continue to fade. In the mix of strong in-store and foot traffic, Heavy Model alongside that expanding digital business will continue to serve Target well uh, because e-commerce for as much as it has grown And for as much as it is definitely going to be a big part of the future, it still accounts for less than 15% of total U.S. retail sales as of the third quarter. Target's longer-term earnings outlook has also soared since its Q3 release. This helps it land a Zach's rank number one strong buy at the moment. The stock also rocks an overall A value growth momentum score, so that VGM score, and its 1.5% dividend yield tops Walmart. It matches the S&P 500's average, and it comes in not too far below the 30-year U.S. Treasury. Target stock has climbed about 45% in 2020 to double its industry's average and Walmart. More broadly, Target has now outpaced Amazon over the past two years, up about 160% versus Amazon's 100% climb. As of Tuesday, Target's sitting right near its highs, and it's trading at about 100 percent $79 per share. That said, its valuation picture continues to improve from earlier in the year and has consistently traded at a discount compared to its peer group. That includes Costco, Dollar General, and others. So with that in mind, we should also note that 12 of the 18 brokerage recommendations that Zacks has for Target come in at a strong buy at the moment with six more at a hold, which has held pretty steady over the last month. So with that in mind, looking ahead, Target's Q4 revenue is expected to climb another 12.3% all the way up to over $26 billion. Meanwhile, its adjusted earnings are expected to climb about 27% to help bring its full year earnings uh, to climb about 38% all the way up to $8.83 per share. Meanwhile, its top line is expected to climb about 17% 
in 2020 all the way up to $91 billion. With that said, currently at the moment, our Zach's estimates are calling for its 2021 sales and earnings to slip slightly from this massive growth that it saw in 2020, which would definitely be hard to replicate considering that the coronavirus changed retail shopping patterns so quickly and for so long. With that said, when the company reports its Q4 results, we could easily see those uh, outlooks change as the shopping patterns are unlikely to change overnight, especially as the vaccine is no guarantee to instantly bring back uh, these small businesses and change people's shopping patterns in any real way. So definitely look for the possibility of Target posting continuous growth in 2021. So with all of that said, that does it for today's episode of Full Court Finance. Until next time, I'm your host, Ben Rains. And remember, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot us an email over at podcast at zax.com. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.